Hello designers! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create three custom patterns using shapes, lines, and text so that we can fill each of these mock-up images of a shirt, a cap, and a bag with our custom patterns. So you can see that our mock-up images are just plain white shirts and caps and bags and the idea is to go and fill them up with a pattern of our making. We're going to start with our shirt image and I'm going to create a new pattern by going to File and New. You can also press Ctrl N as a shortcut. I'm going to select the web preset and I'm going to change the measurements of this um, document to 500 pixels to 500 pixels. And I'm going to call this document pattern number one and click Create. The document's going to be pretty small so I'm going to use a zoom tool so that I can zoom in. And from here, I'm going to go to Window at the top of my workspace and select Shapes. Now, the shape selection is a little bit small. There's not a lot of options, so I'm going to click on the bars on the top right-hand side of the Shapes panel and select Legacy Shapes. And what this will do is that it will enable me to use all of the shapes that Photoshop has hidden from me. If you go and click on the Legacy Shapes folder, there's going to be several subcategories that you guys can use. Today I'm interested in using the Sea Creatures category, and I'm going to be using that as well as the Aquatic Creatures category so that I can create a really interesting pattern inspired by sea life. To select a shape from one of these categories, all you have to do is click and drag it over to your canvas. You can see here that I'm minimizing the shape by dragging on the points on the corner, similar to what I would do if I was using Free Transform. And I'm also going and rotating some of the shapes to create a more visually engaging pattern. To create an interesting pattern, you can also use an odd number of shapes. So I'm going to be using five instead of four or six shapes here. It, there's really no limit to how many shapes you can use, but I would say maybe no more than five. But as you guys will recall, using an odd number just works. The human eye responds to odd numbers. So I would recommend keeping it like three or five. And you guys can see how I'm minimizing the size of some of these shapes so that they don't overlap and so that they have a little bit more visual interest than if every single shape was the exact same color, exact same size. So for now, you can see how I'm playing around with some of the rotating and placement of these shapes. Um, before I start committing to certain colors to use for them. So now that I have an odd number of shapes and I like the arrangement I put them in, I realize that all of these shapes have a thick black stroke around them. So what I'm going to do is select the shape tool and in the options bar you can see how I'm setting the stroke to none. So the stroke color is set to black by default. I'm just basically selecting that little swatch with a cross over it so that I don't see that black stroke anymore. Then to speed up my process, I'm going to control click each of my layers and then control G to group all my shapes into one group, which will make it easier for me to go and apply edits. I'm using my gradient overlay effect that you guys know I'm kind of obsessed with so that I can apply one even gradient to keep all of these shapes uniform. Because it's a sea life kind of theme, I'm just going and choosing different blue gradients, but of course you guys will select colors based on whatever theme you selected for the selection of shapes in your pattern. Now that my pattern is complete, I'm gonna define it by going to edit and define pattern. And because I'll be making multiple patterns, I want to make sure I give it a name so that it makes it easier for me to find. I don't need this document open anymore, so I'm going to X out of it without saving. And now I'm going to go to my template and I'm going to zoom in on the shirt layer that I'm going to be filling with my pattern. I'm going to click on FX at the bottom of my workspace at the bottom of the layers panel, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna start by a color overlay effect to give the shirt an overall color underneath the pattern. 
you can see that I'm changing the blend mode from normal to multiply so I can see all the wrinkles and the details and the shadows of the shirt. Then I'm applying a pattern overlay effect using the pattern that I just created. You can see how it's fairly large, so I'm going to go and scale down my pattern so that I can see all of those beautiful sea creatures. And you can adjust the scale according to how small or how big you want it to appear. Make sure your blend mode for the pattern overlay is also set to multiply so that you are able to see all of the wrinkles and shadows in the shirt to make it seem like it's a real fabric. Once you're happy with the result, you're going to click OK to save your changes. Now, it is at this point where I would suggest you create a background layer under your shirt as well. I had decided to fill it with the pattern, which was a pretty bad idea. So I'm going to skip a few steps because I will be coming back to this um, artboard later on. Now I'm ready to start filling up the cap. And once again, I'm going to be creating a custom pattern. So go to File, New, and create a new document for web yet again with the same measurements, 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And in this case, I want to create something similar to Louis Vuitton. If you guys are familiar with that brand, you know that Louis Vuitton is basically like a fancy logo and all of their bags and paraphernalia are basically just full of the name over and over again repeated. So I want to do something similar for my cap. I wrote my name. You guys can write your name, nickname, whatever you want really as long as it's school appropriate. And I selected an interesting bold cake roll font that I installed from thefont.com. And now I'm just going and selecting a fun vivid color for it. Before I increase the size so that it takes up most of the document um, most of the space on the canvas. Now I want to go and repeat that Louis Vuitton aesthetic or um, just make it look like repeated. So I'm basically going to hit Control J multiple times over until I fill the entirety of the canvas with my name. It might speed up your process if you actually hold down Control and then uh, duplicate three or four layers at a time to just make it a little bit faster for you. Once again, I'm going to hold down control and select each of these layers. And then I'm going to group them using control G. This will help me to apply edits simultaneously. So here I pressed FX so that I can apply a very subtle drop shadow underneath the name. You can see that I'm adjusting the spread and the size of that drop shadow because the drop shadows work best when they are subtle. So if I have a really heavy, thick drop shadow, it's not going to look real and it's going to look kind of cheesy. You can see now I'm also applying a gradient overlay effect because hello, this is Elizabeth Abaya and Elizabeth Abaya loves gradient overlays, especially using shades of pink and corals. So what I wanted to do is just have a really subtle blend of colors with all my name. I wanted to apply a stroke, a very thin yellow stroke around the words just to give it a little bit more pop. And once I click OK, I'm ready to define my name, repeated over and over again, as a pattern. Once again, I'm going to Edit. I'm going to select Define Pattern. And I want to give it a name to make it easier for me to find. Now that I'm done defining this as a pattern, I'm going to go back to the template. I'm selecting the cap layer. You guys want to leave the shadow layer alone just to give it that three-dimensional simulation. And once again, I'm going to FX at the bottom of my workspace and selecting uh, pattern overlay. In this case, I'm selecting the brand new pattern that I just created with the text. This works a lot better when you scale the text up or the pattern up so that the text is kind of abstracted and it creates the illusion that it's wrapping around the contours of the cap. So you can see how I'm setting it to 500%. And again, the illusion would be that you can read Liz on one side of the cap, Abaya on the other side of the cap. Again, 
you guys are selecting whatever text works for you and once again I'm also applying a color overlay selecting multiply as my blend mode just so that I can give the cap an overall cute color so in other words I don't want to leave it at the default white I decided because the pattern is already so loud and obnoxious I wanted to just do a solid color for the background so you can see how I'm matching that yellow that I'm using in the cap and just making it a more subtle um, more subtly darker value before I move on and work on my last artboard. For the last image in my template, I am going to be filling this bag with another pattern. In this case, I'm going to be filling it with a pattern of stripes. So one more time, I'm creating a 500 by 500 pixel document. And this time around, I'm going to right click on my shape tools and I am going to be selecting my line tool. The line tool does exactly what you expect it to do. It creates a line. You can see how I'm making that line diagonal just to create a little bit of tension. And you guys will not going to set a fill to the line, but rather a stroke color. Then you can see how I'm just going and adjusting the thickness of that stroke to 20 pixels to make it pretty thick. You can also change whether the line is a solid uh, line like mine is, or you can make it dashed or dotted as necessary. So I'm going to create several different stripes in rainbow order. So what you can see me doing is holding down control J over and over again so that I can duplicate that line and basically just go and keep it about evenly spaced um, so that every stripe is evenly spaced from the other one. And I'm basically just repeating my steps here, duplicating the lines until I'm ready to start changing up the stroke color. When you guys are doing your own patterns, I don't necessarily want you guys to copy my direction of the lines. I also don't want you guys to copy my color choices. So feel free to experiment and do your own variations. Okay, now I'm ready to start changing colors. So for every one of these lines that I dragged out onto the canvas, I'm just going and selecting a solid color for the stroke, not the fill, the stroke, because it's a line. So essentially, you're not going to see a fill. It's not like if you dragged out a rectangle or something. And I'm going in rainbow order, but you guys, of course, don't have to copy my color choices. In fact, I expect you to use your own. I'm going to be repeating my steps here where I hold down control and select each of these lines so that I can group it by pressing control G or clicking on that little folder icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And I thought it would give it a little bit more oomph by adding a little drop shadow underneath each of those lines. And so that's what I'm doing here, just adjusting the drop shadow and making it very subtle pink in color. Now I'm ready to define this as a pattern. So I'm going to go to edit, define pattern, and I'm going to give it a name one more time. I no longer need this open. So I'm going to X out of this document. And now I'm ready to apply a pattern overlay over the bag group. You guys are not going to ungroup it. Just apply the pattern overlay over the group so that you can keep all of the different um, shadows and effects that were on that bag group. And here you guys can see how I am adjusting the scale of that pattern because I couldn't decide whether I wanted it to be an extreme close-up or if I just wanted it to um, show lots of interlocking lines, one on top of the other like this. You can see how I'm repeating my steps from earlier and applying a color overlay effect as well. In this case, the pattern was already so colorful. I just wanted to keep the actual bag color very minimal. So I just selected that um, very pale pink. And finally, I wanted to go and create a background. So in this case, I just wanted to keep it simple with a gradient instead of a solid color.
You can see here how I had that god-awful pattern repeated in the background of my shirt layer. Um, this is the time for you guys to make any changes if you're dissatisfied. You can see here I made some changes and I decided to go with a dinosaur pattern for the shirt instead. And then I basically just did a solid color fill layer to go underneath my finished shirt. And I didn't really make any changes to the cap. So now that I am done creating these beautiful patterns and filling them, I'm ready to export my final draft. We're going to go to File, Export, and you guys are going to select Artboards to PDF so that we can create a multi-page document out of this file. We're going to select our desktop as a destination, and we're going to give the file name a, a name that you guys are going to recognize. So I'm just going to call it Finish Template. And from here, you guys need to select the option that says Multi-Page Document before we click Run. I sped up the process, but it should take you guys a little bit longer so that when I scroll through it, here's my finished designs. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you guys subscribe for more content. Bye.